Where are the fun activities in a Charlotte Mason education? Let's talk about it. Welcome to the Simply Charlotte Mason podcast. I'm Sonia Schaefer. Today we want to talk about fun in Charlotte Mason. Laura Pitney is here to join me in this discussion. Laura, the question that we received was, a mom was changing curriculum. She was switching from a different method to a Charlotte Mason curriculum, but she said she was going to miss all of the fun activities that had been written into that curriculum. So we need to address that. Is Charlotte Mason fun? Are there fun activities in Charlotte Mason education? I would say yes, for yeah. sure. <laughs> okay. I, I think we, it might help to delineate the difference between fun and enjoyable. Agreed. There, there's a difference for sure. Yes. So when I think of fun, um, I think of um, stirring up the kids' emotions, this almost like high of emotions. Yes. And then there's a kind of a letdown, too. There's a flip side of that, but that's the goal is, you know, getting the, that emotional high, so to speak. So enjoyable. What would you say enjoyable? Enjoyable is um, it's pleasant. It's not repulsive. You know, it's not like I hate doing this. It, it is something that is pleasant, but it's more of a steady thing than this emotional roller coaster, if you will. Yeah. Now, when I started way back when, before, it, as, I was, as I was still learning about Charlotte Mason, I was coming from a unit studies background. Mm -hmm. And so I was doing a lot of these activities, what they would think of as fun activities, that were written into the curriculum and that I was putting in by myself. But I remember that as my kids grew older, I would refer back to those activities that we had done that first year. And they would remember some of the activities, mm -hmm. not all of them. That was yeah. interesting. And they would remember the activity, but they would not remember the lesson that went with it. Like we were studying um, one of the Roman emperors, and we built this great big ark out of paper over a big archway in our house, <laughs> an open doorway. Sure. Made this huge arch, put it up there. It took forever. You know, I'm not artsy craftsy, so to me it was like, why are we doing this? It yeah. takes forever. But we got it up there, and it's like, ta-da, took yeah. pictures, da 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 they did not remember which emperor it was for or anything about their Ark de Triomphe or anything yeah. like that. So there's a difference, I think. We, we might put too much emphasis on these fun activities because we think that they are more valuable than they really are. Yeah. Would you agree with that? I would, and I think that that's... Um Something that is learned the longer you do Charlotte Mason is that those fun activities naturally happen versus the planned ones that maybe are written into a curriculum. Yeah, or teacher-directed. Correct. We're going to do this now. Correct. Not that those are necessarily bad, but if we really get to the heart of Charlotte Mason's philosophy, it's what is growing on the inside, we want it to come out. Yes, what that looks like can't be scripted. Like it's because it connects so differently to each child. That's one of the reasons why it's not specific activities for every lesson from every book, because yeah. we don't know what's gonna connect to our child that was gonna make them want to do the game or the dress up or the comic strip or the Play-Doh art. You know, we just don't know what is gonna connect with them and what's necessarily gonna come out. So the activities are there. The fun and enjoyment is there. It's just not necessarily scripted. Yes. Does that make sense? Absolutely, okay. <laughs> absolutely. And we were talking about this earlier and you had a good point yeah. that that's kind of how it is for us as adults too. Yeah, as I was chewing on the thought of this, you know, I think about me and my adulthood I'm inspired by maybe the view out my window or something pretty I see in the store or maybe a magazine article that maybe has the pictures or the words paint a picture in my mind. All these things I'm just kind of chewing on. Then all of a sudden I'm like, you know what? I want to rearrange this furniture or paint this wall to kind of mirror what that vision gave me. It's like it hits me and it comes out and I just want to do it, you know? So 
I was thinking about how that connects with me, and then in the same way, that process is happening in my children. You know, they're being influenced by all the things around them, our home atmosphere, the books they read. Um, all a visit the ideas. To, yeah, it's, yeah, it's just pouring into them. And who am I to say, make it come out right now? Yes, and it has to look like this. Correct. So there's freedom in trusting the method, knowing that in my experience as an adult, that is happening, that I can trust it as I'm doing this method with my children, that it's going to come out as well. And I've seen it. You yes. know, it, early on, um, I, I do remember having things scheduled for my little ones to do, keeping their hands busy in a profitable way, or together we're going to work on this project, but it's ultimately teaching them this kind of craft that they'll use as they develop. You know, so I do remember having things planned out and purposeful. And, um, you know, if we're going to make origami, we might stream it up for a little tea party. You know, it, there was things that we did in our home that were projects and fun things. Um, so I don't want to neglect those things. My mindset was just, okay, what's the purpose of it? And let's keep that going um, to where it's not just stuff I, you know, that doesn't help the atmosphere or something that they're learning. Yeah, it's real kind of easy things. to cross the line <laughs> yes. into busy work. Yes, and so I definitely caution that. But I, I mentioned that to say that it's not like I, ne I neglected all the things, just like you didn't either. It was just it kind of grew into what it naturally should be versus what I thought it should be. And so um, as my children got older, I definitely saw the fruits of my labor, so to speak, um, and I had to let go of wanting it to be a certain way or happen at a certain time. Oh, that's a good point. You know, it, because it's like all this effort of pouring into my children, and it's like I want it on cue to come back <laughs> so that I can be like, okay, good job. Yeah, <laughs> that's so I can take a picture and say, right. see, they learned something. Ta-da! Right. Yeah. And so it just, I had to let go of that because that's not, real life, especially in the Charlotte Mason world, when we're, we're wanting them to connect to all these beautiful things and ideas, I had to let go of it fitting into my time frame or my mold. So, you know, I had, you know, kids dressing up, acting out stories, you know, maybe during their free time. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had um, children asked to get out clay and make little um, scenes of, of things or ideas that they connected to. I've had um, one of my daughter... Um, one of my daughters, I have more than one, she was inspired um, by, I, I don't know how to wear it, like the, the picture that was painted in her mind. And so she wanted to decorate in that color scheme in her room. So it's like there's connections happening yeah. all the time. It just doesn't fit into my mold. Right. So letting go of, of it happening the way I want it to happen and then letting go of the mess. <laughs> Yes, or and the inconvenience. The inconvenience. Mm -hmm. You know, that that's really hard for me, but it's so worth it to to let them do their thing. Our <laughs> kids would get together with another family's kids and create movies. Yeah. And I remember once they turned the whole living room into the movie set, and so we helped move all the furniture out, and it was weeks that they were in there making this movie in the living room, which was no longer a living room. But we have to make room for those things and, mm -hmm. and show respect to that learning process because it's so valuable. And if you think about it, it's as you were saying, mm -hmm. as an adult, when you finally get to the point where it's like, okay, this idea has been germinating. Now's the time to act on it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to paint the front porch or whatever it is, yeah. that could create an inconvenience for them. Yeah. You know, now I'm making a mess. Now they, now they can't use the front porch. Now maybe I've been working on this so long I don't get supper made. Sorry, kids. You know, <laughs> well, it's a two-way street, yeah. you know? So it does create some inconvenience. And sometimes it makes a mess. Yeah. But I think it is so valuable mm -hmm. to have student and child-initiated ideas of, of fun, hands-on activities yeah. rather than scripted, teacher-directed, it must happen now and look just like this activities. Yeah. I'll give you a good example of that. So 
a couple years ago, our history time period we studied were Middle Ages. So um, we, you know, obviously spent the whole year on that time period reading the stories and such. And so since then we've moved on. Um, this year we're doing, we're back around to ancient. So, you know, here we are. And so, you know, one of those things of giving your children duct tape and a safe hot glue gun that's, you know, not going to burn, burn them too bad, scissors, old t-shirt they could cut. It's like, I'm in there getting my coffee one morning, I turn around, there's just like this full man in armor standing next to me <laughs> Oh, because he had made the helmet, he had made the breastplate, all the, all the gadgets, all, everything, head to toe. I mean, I had seen him working on it for a few sure. days, you know, yeah. but it's like, okay, it's seven o'clock in the morning, half asleep, and then... Hello, Mr. Armed, you know, <laughs> man here standing. So here we are almost three years later, and it's coming out yes. of him. Yeah. You know, and I couldn't have planned that any better. I mean, he knew, mm. you know, all the parts of the armor that he wanted. I mean, he knew the weapons. You know, it it, it was an inconvenience to me to have to go get all the duct tape, <laughs> you know, and save all the Amazon boxes and you know, make sure the glue gun was, you know, in working order and he wasn't using it on the, you know, just all, there were so many components that was just irking me, <laughs> you know, um, but it was worth it, you know, to, just even the pride that he had of this accomplishment. I mean, sure, one day we'll probably throw it all in the trash, you know, but the fact that he spent so much time and thought and he applied what he remembered or what he wanted, um, the, the skills it took to trace and cut all the cardboard pieces. I mean, yes. you know, it was a big deal, but here we are, you know, I guess three si history cycles later, not even on that. And it has surfaced and come out, you know, and but it's been, the idea yeah. has been growing and growing and growing. Yeah. I mean, I'm just going to make him like stand guard at my front door, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's his position now, <laughs> scare off all the things. But <laughs> And that is to me, that is so much more valuable. It's a peek inside the ideas mm -hmm. that are taking root yeah. rather than here we have a project we're going to do now. Everybody get out your scissors and yeah. your crayons and everybody make it look like this mm -hmm. and that, so I can check it off and say we did something fun. We, yeah. we did this project and now you remember. <laughs> it's not as easy as that. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I thought of another uh, difference between fun and enjoyable. And again, you know, trust in the method that the activities will come out, you know, and the things that they connect to will come out. But, you know, sometimes we're not necessarily good at what we're teaching, and therefore sometimes we make mistakes. So him study is a good example for me. I am not... Uh, a natural singer. It takes effort for me to practice and get the melody and, you know, to sing along with my kids. And I mess up a lot. And that's really fun because the kids, you know, laugh at me and we giggle and, you know, it's okay. Let's try again. You know, for them to see the mistakes and know that I'm going to keep trying because I'm right. not a good singer, you know, that's really fun. And it makes our hymn time enjoyable because we're all working hard together to yeah. accomplish, you know, that lesson of learning the hymn together. So, you know, I don't want to discredit the fun part of it, but it's not in the sense of um, that, em that emotional high, per se. No, it's different. It's very much a relational yes. thing. Yes, yes. That you're building those relations with yeah. each other, having fun together. Yes. And, and it's so important for them to see that, we, yeah. You can laugh at yourself yeah. and keep trying. That's a huge yeah. example yeah. to them. Yeah. So amidst the fun, they're learning important lessons and ideas as well. Yeah. Thanks. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe through iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, or your favorite podcast app so you don't miss an episode. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.